Greetings. This is Ramesses II. I will show you the reference in a minute. This is Museum Egizio, Turin's Egyptian Museum in Italy. Now here it says Imen Ramesu. The Ankh Jet. You should know what it means by now. By, by now. now I have some leaf here that is not so clear. That might be Hator. I'm not sure. I'm not sure that we will have a deity depicted so small. So, and besides here, we have the lock, uh, usually worn by children, even though it's not exclusively worn by children. So, it might not be Hator on the side because to have a deity very small, I don't know. Here, once again, we have the name Imen. Um, but anyway. Let me show you the reference. Statue of Ramesses II. <clears throat> New Kingdom, 19th Dynasty, reign of Ramesses II, circa 1200 BC, from Karnak, Temple of Amun, reference C, 1380. The statue of Ramesses II. The king is depicted in all his majesty. He wears the Kefresh crown and holds the Heka scepter against his chest. His transparent pleated ceremonial dress, ceremonial dress reveals his muscled body. Under his sandals, he tramples, he tramples the, nine, the nine balls, symbols of the enemies of Egypt. On the sides of the throne, he's called the Sematawi, the knotted heraldic plants of Upper and Lower Egypt representing the union of the two lands. Dynasty, continu dynasty continuity is expressed by the figures of his wife, Nefertari, and his son, Amun Herkepeshef, on either side of his legs. The long reign of Ramesses II probably witnessed a stylistic evolution of the world portrait. The face of this statue shows great similarities with that of Seti I, Ramesses II's predecessor. For this reason, it was sometimes regarded as a statue of the father usurped by the, usurped by the son. However, ni neither the sculpture nor the inscription show visible signs of reworking. The statue pr probably belongs to the beginning of the reign of Ramses II. In any case, it can be no later than the first half of the reign. Due to the presence of Queen Nefertari, who died in the year 30, this statue is one of the symbols of the Museo Egizio. In a letter that he wrote during his stay in Turin in 1824, Champollion described with enthusiasm the beauty and the admirable perfection of this colossal figure. For six whole months, I have seen it every day, and always I have the impression of seeing it for the first time. The head is divine, the feet and, hand, the feet and hands are admirable, the body is voluptuous, voluptuous, I call it the Egyptian Apollo or the Belvedere. In short, I'm in love with it. This was Champollion's words. Champollion is credited as being the one who deciphered the hieroglyphs thanks to the Rosetta Stone. But that's a long story. Other people have been working on it. I'm talking about the translation of the Middle Ages.